Hi, uh, thank you. And uh, welcome to the uh, preparing managers and employees to be effective as remote workers. Um, so uh, I'm Steve Wood. And I thought I'd just give a quick introduction of myself. So I uh, actually joined Slack as a remote employee. I've actually uh, never worked in the office with my fellow employees. Uh, so that kind of gives me, I suppose, an interesting perspective in terms of this next, uh, this world that we're living in currently. Uh, as a quick background, um, I'm actually an entrepreneur. I've spent actually most of my life working in technology that empowers uh, people to use technology and build applications. So being in the workflow space, I actually sold my first company to Salesforce, which I'm now rejoining with Slack, uh, and then sold my second company, which I started after leaving Salesforce, and sold that to Dell and became uh, this chief product officer of a company called Boomi. But all of my career has really been about empowering people to use technology to automate work and improve productivity within their organizations. But, but as I say, I joined remotely uh, just over a year ago during the height of the pandemic. So I suppose I come with an interesting perspective uh, as, as a leader running platform uh, here at Slack. So um, if you wanted uh, to understand maybe a little bit more about what Slack does, Slack is a channel-based messaging platform. And really just see it as a place where conversations take place in channels. And channels can really be about anything. It could be you know, a project you're working on. They could be uh, uh, an, an, a team. They could be a feature you're working on. It could be a support case, something like that. And the kind of conversations happen in these channels where you can share files, but you can also connect your tools. Uh, so you can get notifications about what's actually what's going on and what's important inside of your business. So a notification of say a new lead is created or a case needs your attention or something like that. So um, certainly for me, joining as a, a, a remote manager and leader within Slack, it was actually kind of su super invaluable. I'll give you the, the reasons why. Um, I have a, quite a few teams that I that work with me in terms of delivering the platform product here at Slack. Um, so being able to join each of those channels and see all the conversations flowing between all of my team members was fantastic cross-functionally. Um, but it also allowed me to kind of look backwards in, in the past and see what my predecessor had done and prior decisions that were made in previous documentation. And all of that was made available to me to search through, but also to scroll back through. So it was an onboarding experience. It was certainly really invaluable for me um, to actually get up to speed about what we needed to, to do. Um, so we actually do like to think about Slack as a digital headquarters for a, a business. Um, and let me just talk though a little bit more about how Slack thinks about this kind of next, I suppose, transformation that we're going through. And the first piece I'd say is that we really do feel that we that that this is the next transformation. It's not going back. It's actually another transformation. It's perhaps the most difficult transformation that we're going to go through. But I actually do think this transformation will really be where we see the winners and losers in this economy. So Slack has leaned into a digital first approach, which means that we're absolutely saying that we should leverage the tools and technologies that we have uh, in a digital space before we jump on a plane or go into the office. Um, and we actually think that those that leverage these tools will be the ones that win. And actually we have this uh, thing called the Future Forum uh, where um, we take surveys of uh, leading companies um, across the globe to get a sense of, in, in the United States uh, predominantly uh, to get a sense of what's working for them and what uh, and what they're seeing. And some really interesting stats came out, which I, I, I was uh, really in awe about. One is, is that between those that use new tools and technologies to empower their employees and those that are laggards in the technology space, there is a 68% difference in, in terms of access to resources, a 70% improvement in terms of greater focus, and a 57% greater productivity reported by the employees of those businesses. So compared with those that lean into technology and digital first and those that are the industry laggards. And I think that's the competitive advantage that we need to think about. That's the next transformation because those companies that are 70% more focused and 57% more productive are going to be the ones that leap ahead of those that decide to go back to the old model. And so I'll give you an example. Um, so Brett, who's the COO of Salesforce, uh, told an interesting story to us about how, you know, in the old world, he would obviously visit customers physically in this kind of new digital first world. 
he was able to visit 70 customers in the past quarter. And that's just something you couldn't do in, in the world of getting on planes. We couldn't do and hold down a full-time COO job at the same time. So the, our ability to scale ourselves is, is much uh, more there in a digital landscape than it was prior. So those that kind of decide to go back on planes aren't going to visit as many customers, aren't going to make those connections, and aren't going to grow their businesses as well, which means we need to think about how we can use these digital tools to actually connect more effectively, but mainly also with our employees. Um, Stuart actually, uh, who's the COO of, of uh, Slack, also made an interesting observation that he spent, in the, in the old world, he spent 10 times more time thinking about his physical environments in the office space than the digital environment. And we actually do think that, that model is gonna flip where you should actually spend 10 times the amount of time thinking about your digital environment and how you can improve that space for your employees. And I think that we will start to see this move of, you know, when we talk about hybrid work or digital first, sounding a little bit like paperless office in the sense that nobody really talks about the paperless office anymore. It's just a paperless office because we're all using computers these days. I know there are some exceptions, but generally speaking, paperless office is a language of old. Um, so let me get into the uh, employee side because that's actually really been um, important to me certainly as, as a leader. And I think what we are seeing is there's this massive uh, resignation that's happening. Um, and we're seeing over half of employees are looking to leave their current business and one in five are actively looking. And I think this is where, you, when you think about engaging with your employees, uh, you're going to need to think very carefully about this because the market is going to decide what happens next. And by the market, I mean the market of your employees, either through attrition or through your ability to recruit new employees. How you see the future of work in your organization is gonna impact whether or not they want to join your organization. So I think we've seen that, you know, a number of employees saying they just simply won't go back to a company that is, uh, you know, in person only. And what we hear a lot from our surveys is that employees are looking for flexibility, which is absolutely key, but not complete flexibility. They do want some structure where there's an expectation that either they're having meetings virtually or they're actually going in to collaborate, but there are structured time and there is some form of meeting. So, um, let me, let me talk to you a little bit about, I guess, maybe some impressions that, that I've had as a leader coming in. One is that the world has really felt like it's sped up. Um, and I think employees are absolutely feeling that, certainly in the knowledge worker space. Uh, in my old company, we joked a bit about, I was an executive there, and there was a joke in the employees that they really wished we'd get back on planes because when we uh, now had more time focused to work using these digital tools, it meant we had more time to form strategy, more time to dream up lots of great plans. And of course they're like, oh God, please don't dream up any more plans because we just haven't got the capacity to consume all of these sort of uh, uh, ideas to execute against. So that kind of, but again, like that time that we were spent actually strategizing and aligning, we hadn't really spent before. And actually you can see that that actually caused us to speed up. Now how we scale that through our employees is, is, is an interesting challenge to think about. But one of the key ways that we have seen to scale is actually a simple thing, and that's actually trust. And I think as a leader coming in and actually working with uh, the, my peers, working with my teams, is that I really did have to focus on building trust. And I think certainly in the world that we've been living in lately, trust is definitely something that we're seeing is getting, we're getting a little light on. And I, I don't think I can emphasize more how much I've had to lean into talking to my employees in meeting time as humans and really leaning away from thinking about meetings as very structured agenda times to kind of explicitly go through the things that we needed to cover and actually just letting conversations flow a little bit more because we've really had to rebuild that trust. In my case, I've had to establish that trust with uh, the people that I work with. You know, we've lost things like walking one-on-ones. That was an old favorite of mine. So I think that like, you know, we need to kind of think about how we kind of bring that back in a new uh, digital world. And actually one of the things that we've done actually, it's, it's a capability of Slack. One thing I think you could do more is there's actually do that kind of, you know, unstructured discussions. And we have a feature actually in Slack called Huddles, which actually is audio only. And it's actually, the number of people have said it's just fantastic to get off of video so that they can sort out something, go for a walk, kind of get outside or just do activities that are harder to do on video rather than having to stare at a screen. And so they're a great kind of tool of actually go, maybe going back to audio to reduce some of that uh, video fatigue. 
I mean, I think we're, you're seeing, I think we're all seeing that is the integration of home and work has really never been so tight. And we need to just be super cognizant of that is like actually sitting in front of a video like this stops me from doing other things that I may need to do to manage my home and work life. Um, and I think actually one, one sort of observation that I thought was kind of music is actually going into the pandemic, you know, a child running onto a Zoom call would have been kind of a mortifying experience for many people, but now it's actually considered pretty much, yep, it's just another day uh, at work. Um, so we're definitely seeing that that integration of work and life, but I think we really do need to appreciate that, not just in how we treat our employees and that we kind of need to actually really try to you know uh, build that trust and empathy for the that that work life integration but also how we think about employee performance and i don't think that there is a generic answer that there maybe there were, was before when you kind of came into the office and you kind of measure performance more easily i think in this new world it's much much harder to understand what performance looks like i mean i did actually uh, say to an employee you know how do you measure em employee performance in a global pandemic i mean what what does great look like uh, in that kind of environment I um, mean, I think actually one of the, the, the stats that uh, kind of hit me pretty hard in terms of the work that we've done with our future forum is that one and a half million women have left the workforce to become full-time caregivers in the United States. And that's a startling and quite sort of sad statistic really to think about that that kind of integration of work and life has been a substantial challenge, particularly for women in the workforce. And I think we really do need to appreciate that when we think about uh, our employees and, and making sure that they have what they need because the situations that they're handling these days are much more complex uh, than they used to be. So I thought I would uh, raise that. All right, in my last few minutes, I thought I'd uh, make a couple of uh, other observations uh, from what I've seen. Um, one is this idea of like social equity. Uh, and we've had this really interesting debate inside of Slack of, you know, are we still living off the social equity of those who met each other in the office? I don't actually think we know the answer to that question yet. What I mean by that is those who actually got to meet each other versus myself, who actually only has met people physically, is our process is still working because of that social equity that was built up. We don't think we are, but we are definitely seeing a change of how we need to think about the flow of work. Previously, we went into an office. Offices were very designed to get a sense of the flow of work going through the organization. You sat near to people that you needed to collaborate with. And in this new environment, We've really flattened it out, which has been great for remote workers. A lot of the people working remotely have felt a much stronger sense of belonging with the organization. There's no more of the, I'm the person who's on the Zoom call while everybody else is in the meeting room. So I think that's actually having a fantastic effect on the sense of equity and inclusion in the workplace, but it's also creating a disorientated sense of actually, well, who do I need to work with and how do I work with them in the same way that I did before? So I think we kind of need to recognize that proximity bias uh, that used to exist and how that actually enabled also the, the, the flow of work in organizations. Um, so it's just something to, get to, uh, to, to consider. Um, and actually, the, the, there was one actually interesting stuff that also came out of our future forum, which is that uh, when we think about bringing people in and actually organizing uh, work and kind of like thinking about the hierarchy of work, it was interesting that actually executives uh, see going back to the office is much more important than employees in terms of understanding their role in the organization and their sense of belonging. I think as executives, we need to be cognizant of that, that we hold this bias. We all want to go back in because it helps us understand the flow of work and the hierarchy of how things get done. But actually those in middle management positions and, and individual contributor positions are actually less, are less excited about that idea. So I thought maybe I'd just sort of finish up with maybe a couple of um, things that, that, that we've seen. One is that at Slack, we actually have given uh, employees access to office space for those who don't um, have it so that they can actually get out of the home and actually go to somewhere, particularly if they have challenges at home. Um, so, uh, and we've also instituted things like asynchronous video. So those people that need to can check in any time they can to give them much more flexibility in their day. But with that, I know I'm running uh, out of time, but I just wanted to, to really lean into this idea that look, in this new world, we really need to focus on building a sense of connection. I do think that we should lean into a digital first world. I think that those that harness this next transformation will be the organizations that leap ahead of the others. I think the idea of going back to how we, we used to work will be the laggards uh, of the future. So with that, um, hopefully you found that informative and really appreciate the time. Thank you.